Hey everybody, it's Randy with Randy's RV Bible Study. I'm not in the RV today. I'm in New Mexico. I've been in New Mexico for a couple days. Bought a piece of land. God has blessed me with land. <laughs> I can't even. i just giddy about it. Uh, exciting. Uh, Ten acres of property. So I'm excited. But I haven't spoken to you and haven't done a lesson with you uh, for a few days. And so I wanted to, even though I'm tired, uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, the word and I want to get into it where I've been in Ephesians Ephesians 5 and 15 uh, today so this says see that you walk circumspectively not as fools but wise uh, before we go on I want to I want to start right there that word uh, circumspectively is ex it means exactness it means thoroughness. It means with caution. It means investigating something with great care. We are to walk, the Christian walk, with great care and caution. Uh, it's very easy to get persuaded by the world and by people in the world and the temptations of the devil and so many different things. Every decision that you make, or at least I make now, I proposed to the Lord. I needed to get a hotel and I couldn't find one. <clears throat> What's having a <coughs> difficult time today? I'm in Albuquerque tonight. And uh, I just said, Lord, I need a hotel. Uh, I was in uh, the other town, Los Luna, I think, and at uh, Luna's. And uh, there was no room at the end, believe it or not. We've all heard that story before, but there was no room. And uh, so, anyways. That's not necessarily being cautious, but it is being forthright with my relationship with the Lord. It's it's constantly on. Um, but to be cautious in everything we do and to be uh, careful and walk circumspectively with exactness. That's what we want to do. So, in, and the Bible says, not as fools. We don't want to be a fool. Right. So walk circumspectively verse 16 redeeming the time now how do we redeem the time i'm not even sure but redeeming the time because the days are evil and here we go with the days what days is he talking about well if you look in uh genesis 6 12 so god looked upon the earth and and indeed it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted their way on the earth the earth is corrupt. All the politicians are corrupt. And the governments in the world are corrupt. I don't know if you notice this. <laughs> People are corrupt. Why are they corrupt? Why is the nation, why are the nations corrupt? Why are social and political, social? You know, it's not just uh, political corruption. It's social corruption. It's things like BLM. It's things that look good, sound good. But in actuality, they're not good. They're not good at all. Um, and I won't go all into each one. That's not what I'm here to do. I'm saying just because it's uh, save the save the planet, it sounds great. Uh, climate control sounds great. We need electric guitars. Ca guitars, yeah, we need electric guitars. But electric guitars sound great. But in actuality, they're. I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I haven't seen how it can make sense. So. What I'm saying is there is corruption afoot. There's money. Follow the money. That's what they used to say, right? For the love of money, not money, but the love of money is the root of all evil, the Bible says. So follow the money. It's corrupt. The politicians are corrupt and social uh, social program, socialism, social and politics, po politic politics are corrupt. So why is that? Well, it's very simple. The Bible gives the answer for everything. Nothing new under the sun. But why that is the way it is. And excuse me, I'm tired. I am really exhausted. But Because sin is loved. Well, what do you mean? Well, the Bible says. It says uh, that men love the darkness. Men love sin and drank it. In Proverbs, like it was water. They drank iniquity like it was water. So... 
That's what's going on there. The, the world is corrupt. So he says, redeem the time because the days are evil. We have enough day. It, uh, it go, the Bible talks about not looking into tomorrow and talking about tomorrow and I'll do this and that and blah, blah, blah. You, you, you're to look at today because it, today has enough evil for itself, Jesus says. Today is the day to worry about and deal with. Um, and he doesn't say worry, but to deal with. You know what I mean. 17, therefore, not, not be, therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. So there we go back to this idea of circumspectively walking. So what is the will of the Lord? What is your will for me today? What is your will for me right now? And don't be surprised. If you're walking with the Lord and you're, you're, uh, you're walking with him, you're in his word, you're living life circumspectively, you're going to see his providence. I spoke about providence, timely preparations for uh, future eventualities. Timely preparations for future eventualities. I'll say that six or seven times. But that's what you're going to do. That's what you're going to experience as a believer. You're going to experience. You're going to see it in action. You're going to, today I talked to a uh, younger man in his 40s who's going to come out and do some work on my... I just met him yesterday. Not a coincidence, but he's going to do some work on the property just to get me uh, so I can roll my RV up there and uh, and hopefully do some broadcasts from there in, at Randy's RV Bible study. But he's a, he's, he's a young believer in the Lord, so we ended up talking much longer than I thought I should or would have thought I wanted to leave. He was supposed to be there at 1.30, didn't show up, I waited. But, you know, praise the Lord that we got into a talk. We got to talk about the, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. We spoke about him. And uh, I'm going to show you a little bit more about that in this scripture. That's exactly what we're supposed to do. And uh, he, I, he asked me about his Bible. Um, I wasn't too happy with his Bible. It was a, a, a Mormon Bible. And I told him to get, uh, I have a New King James Version. Thompson chain reference guide and I showed him my Bible and he loved it. He loves the study and he's looking for a home, home church out there in the Pie Town area. So um, so listen, we're, we're to not be unwise but understand what the will of the Lord is. Don't walk around <laughs> aimlessly. Walk, walk in your life purposely, intentionally, circumspectively, looking for the Lord and what he wants for your day. Don't make it about your day. It's not really your day. It's the Lord's day. All days are the Lord's day. This day don't belong to you really. If you really think about it. He's the king. We are the creation. He is the creator. So moving on to 18. And do not be drunk with wine. And even this young man said that when he looked at that scripture. Do not be drunk with wine, and which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit. Uh, the Bible says, "Don't get drunk." That uh, do not be drunk. That leads to debauchery. Uh, drunkenness is a sin. And uh, <laughs> tell my my peeps out in Sarasota County. I said that. Tell my peeps in Florida, South Florida, uh, Western, Southwest Florida. I said the Bible says. I didn't say it. God says drunkenness is a sin. Do not get drunk. That leads to debauchery. That's all drunkenness does. Sarasota County, by the way, is number two for alcohol consumption. Drunkenness leads to debauchery. No good decisions are made while you're drunk. No mar Whoever thought marriages will be better uh, by adding alcohol was is insane. It doesn't make your marriage better. Okay, Getting drunk, getting high, this is all just... <sighs> Man, I got that's another that's another uh, lesson, and I'd love to have that lesson and teach you guys uh, why that's not biblical. That's not for godly people. You know, it's time for Christians to be godly people, to walk circumspectively, to walk as godly people. I wonder why people don't want to go to church. We don't. We don't act like Christians. And how is a Christian supposed to act? Well, God says, be holy, for I am holy. Born again Christians. Are there any other kind? No, there isn't. There's only one kind of Christian. Uh, Jesus says, if you, uh, you you need to repent, at least you, if you do not repent, you 
likewise shall perish. I'm getting my brain is foggy. You, you will perish if you don't repent. Let me just put it that way. Repentance is uh, necessary. You must be born again. So Christians, if you're not born again, <laughs> it's time you become a born again Christian. Yes, born again, a new walking, a new way. You're not in the world anymore. You don't walk in the course of the world. Okay. Do not get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Uh, so obviously, alcohol and the Spirit of God don't coincide. Speaking to one another, that's what we talk about, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, singing and making melodies in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God, the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear of God. That's a reverent fear of God. But I want to talk about um, redeeming the time because the days are... No, we did that. Uh, well, speaking in, in the songs, so a spiritual talk, this is a, this is the idea of a spiritual talk used in everyday life. This is what we do. You read around Christians... You get around born-again Christians, you get around people that love the Lord, you're going to know it. They're going to talk about the Lord. Uh, that's what I find. People that are in the world, people that say they're Christians that are not Christians, they don't talk about God. They don't They don't include Him in their conversation. Him in their conversations. Why? Because they haven't been talking to Him. They've been talking to their own made-up God that they made up. Is that possible? Yes, it is. And I think I uh, exhibited that in Scripture a few days ago. You can, the, 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 the Pharisee was praying to God, thank you, God, that I'm not like this, uh, this guy over here. And he's not talking to God. He's talking to himself. He's calling, he's calling himself God. You could pray to yourself. You see the difference? Pray to God. You're going to know, you're going to go, God, what is your will? The, uh, the, the, the other, the other man was saying, Lord, I, I don't deserve your forgiveness. I don't, you know, he was humble. So spiritual talk is, you, so when you're, when you're around Christians, born again Christians, <laughs> real Christians, they're going to talk about Jesus Christ. They love the Lord. They're going to, they're going to talk about him. And uh, so it's used in everyday life. It's used in Deuteronomy, teach your children the ways of the Lord day and night. In Psalms, meditate on the scripture, meditate on his word, day and night. This Bible is telling us to speak, the, talk about the Lord every day. And it's, it's the concerns of the things of God. And it ha it's the habit of the saints. That's what we do, folks. Christ is the topic of our life. Yeah, there's other things. You could talk about other things. I talked about my land. and But God gave me the land. Praise the Lord. Jesus Christ gave me the land. So now, who gets the, is the conversation go back to? Jesus. It's all about Jesus. He gets all the glory. And uh, just like uh, Christ being the topic, the men of uh, one of the, uh, an example out of the men traveling on the road to Emmaus after Christ's crucifixion, they were talking about Christ. And Christ appears to them, unbeknownst to them, they go, hey, and he says, uh, I'm paraphrasing, obviously. He says, and I hope I'm doing an okay job. He says, hey, uh, what's going on? Haven't you heard? So they're talking about Jesus. And uh, he reveals himself to them at uh, dinner at, the, at their house. Talking uh, and singing songs and spiritual talk and having this spiritual talk, it creates fervency in our lives. It creates fervor, a fire. It ignites our fire for the Lord. The more you talk about him, the more you want to know about him, the more you know about him, the more you want to talk about him. He's the king. He reigns supreme. He's awesome in what he's done. How great a salvation. He is awesome. Now he has saved our souls and he changes us miraculously. There's a hymn. There's a, there's a hymn. He changes the leper spots. You ever heard that? No, leper spots can't be changed. Some people, man, you just look at them and go, that's it, them, them spots can't be changed. Jesus Christ can change the most vile of sinners. He can change them, and he can save them, 
and he can turn their lives around. So uh, that's it. You talk about the Lord. I mean, there's no greater thing that's ever happened to you if you are saved. That is the pinnacle moment. That's the apex of your life is you were saved. You were saved from hell. That's what I'm saying. You were saved from judgment. God in Jesus Christ's form came down here and died for us. It's all in the most loving act that you uh, that you can imagine. It's all out of love. Spiritual thought is expressed in music, melodies of your heart, uh, spiritual songs to one another. I have a man, a friend of mine, his wife died first Christmas without her. I said, how are you doing? He said, I miss my wife. And I said, I, I know, man, I'm sorry. 40 years are together. And he said, it's the first Christmas I had alone and that I can remember, he said. And uh, I said, what'd you do? He said, well, I made Christmas dinner and I sang songs to Jesus. And I'm just blown away by that. He lost his wife. He's singing songs to Jesus, making melody in his heart to the Lord God. Listen, we live in a horrible day full of evil and corruption throughout the political realm, throughout the social program. Trust me, it's corrupt. There's always something behind it. Somebody wanting some money. Second Timothy uh, 3 2 says, For men will be lovers of themselves. Covet covetous, boasters, proud, blaspheming, disobedient to parents, unthankful, and unholy. We are living in end times. And I hope that you have made a decision for Jesus Christ. I hope that when I say decision, yeah, I believe in Jesus. Not a made up Jesus. Not a homemade Jesus. Not your own Jesus. Yeah, I mean, Jesus are tight. Uh, not the Jesus that says it's okay for you to continue living in sin because that's not the Jesus of the Bible. The Jesus of the Bible says, likewise, if, uh, if you don't repent, likewise you too shall perish. And you must be born again to see the kingdom of God. That's what must happen. And you need to humble yourself right now where you're at. No matter where you're at. This happens in an instant. It's supernatural that it takes place. Oh, come on, Randy. It's a supernatural event. You humble yourself and tell Jesus. Any way you want to tell him, talk to him and say, God, I am a sinner. And I, I, need, I need you. I need your forgiveness. I need your mercy. He will turn you he, he, you will want to turn around. He will turn your life around. You will no more be the same person you will. And you will never, you don't want, you want to go back. You will see the world through different eyes. And you will be born again. Okay, and I hope that happens. So write me if it has. Let me know. I want to know. I want to celebrate with you. Uh, if you need more information about that, you want me to pray. You want me to help, help you with that decision. I would love to, and I would be honored to do that. And if you need help in other things, addiction, if you need help with depression, codependency, toxic relationships, listen, I have been through all that myself. So I feel maybe I'm not qualified psychologist. No, but I can lead you in the Word of God. And I feel qualified, at least in that, that I have been there and I, I can walk with you. And you can write me on my email that I'll, I'll list here. You know what? I'm going to go. I'm tired. I'm going to hit the hay. Until next time, Lord willing. And uh, I'll see you hopefully with tomorrow or if not tomorrow, the next day. God bless y'all. Listen, I love you. More importantly, Jesus Christ loves you to death. Take care.